everybody. Hi, hi. Hey, how are you? Thanks for watching. My name is Chris, and this is a thing that I make every week with my friends, my very good friends. Dave Piper is producing, and my great friend on camera is Jim McCormick. Hi, Jim. Thanks for coming around and uh, talking about some games with me. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, gonna get get the elephant out of the way. Um, the elephant's name is the Eagles, and uh, <laughs> and they've been hurting me. And yeah, but you know, like we discussed, I'm still two games up on the season, and uh, that's uh, it's only up from here. It is. I'm not. I'm not. We both had losing weeks. You had a slightly worse losing week than I did, but I'm two under. You're two over. I'm two under. It's getting. I mean, it turns out these guys who build the casinos know what they're doing, but we're we're doing our best. Uh, we are here to talk about uh, the week 15 in uh, in the NFL, and we'll make picks against the spread. It's not all we do. Uh, I'm interested in picking Jim's football brain about the various uh, goings on nonsense that's going happening with uh, all of these teams. We have zero buys the rest of the way, so 16 games to get to. Uh, and I want to thank DraftKings for sponsoring us, and uh, we'll talk about them in a little bit. I also want to congratulate Jim, our winner was Sajith Nara last week, who picked the Denver Broncos. I believe I did as well, so obviously Sajith and I are tight. And uh, I didn't uh, have him as my best bet. My best bet was the Browns. That was that was correct. That was a good call. Even though when we recorded, I didn't think Trevor Lawrence would play and felt kind of stupid when he did. But as it turned out, I needn't have worried. And also, we won't dwell on what your best bet was. Yeah, it was some team that plays football. <laughs> You know. <laughs> bitter, bitter Eagle mm. fan. Man, losing to the Cowboys even worse. That's not not what you want. I know. Uh, let's let's talk about these games. Let's preview and and probably we're going to spend more on the ones that we find interesting and a little less on the ones that we find dreadful. And the Thursday night game is. I don't even know if dreadful dreadful uh, accounts for it, Jim. Uh, that might be too kind. Uh, this one or last one because they're all they've been bad. <laughs> they're all uh, the same. Now, well, I've noticed, and there's a trend, not to, you know, spoiler alert. <laughs> wow, what was that? We don't get to, we don't get to intended, uh, intended quarterbacks in any of these games until the fourth game. Wow. Meaning, like, actual all quarterbacks who, 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 were, who were even, like, probably there <laughs> in September. Oh, man. So. I think Aiden O'Connell might have been there, but to That's me... Aiden, he's the longest tenure guy. <laughs> did... did I mean, I don't mean this to sound bad, but when I you remember Modern Family, remember Manny from Modern Family, the the son. Yeah, isn't that Aiden O'Connell grown up? A little bit, yeah, yeah. I can see <laughs> that. Bit. Yeah, he, he he's got backup quarterback face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're ba they're basically exactly as good as each other in playing football. Uh, so we've got the Chargers visiting the Raiders. We're not going to have uh, either of the regular starting quarterbacks. Jimmy Garoppolo is threatening to come back, but not this week. We also aren't going to have Keenan Allen. He's already been ruled out. Uh, bottom line is we don't we don't want to talk about this game very much. So we're just going to make picks. The line is Raiders minus three. And I'll just mention the line didn't move at all when Keenan Allen was ruled out, which I think is my eldest son. Keenan Allen is very, very annoyed by that. It is. It is. It might, might have something to do with like that. They're, I don't know. He's not a Marvel character. He's like a, like a liberal arts college character, Easton stick, whatever this is, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's like Captain Liter is. yeah, like, I mean, whatever's going on here with this game, I don't know what to say. Like, it's like I was reading this article about Antonio Pierce, and it was like, all right, this is interesting. Like, he's getting counsel from coaches, and then it lists the coaches. It was like, it was like, it was like, a, the, the, who's the guy who got fired from the Jets? It was Adam Gase. It was it was Marvin Lewis, and it was like Tom Coughlin. And Tom Coughlin was the, the voice of reason in the room, like just like like shoveling like cold soup in his face. This, this, <laughs> It was just like it got worse as it went. Like this, this article, and I just it felt made me feel comfortable. So this is a terrible game, and I feel bad for Keenan Allen that he doesn't influence lines anymore. I mean, you could tell me that they have four Austin Ecklers; they'd be like minus three, okay? <laughs> minus three. Yeah. Easton Stick. <laughs> so I'm just gonna say this is my push of the week. I guessed this line exactly. I guessed Raiders minus three, and uh, I'm not I'm not betting anybody's cold hard cash on this game. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even sure like who takes over whose stadium here. Nobody. Yeah. Like like. This is the Aiden O'Connell crowd. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going with the Raiders. I do think they have, like, some idea of who they are, which isn't good. But it's <laughs> like the, the, they have this new version, which is, like, thump you on the ground. And then also here's the craziest thought. What if Jimmy Garoppolo had Derek Carr's personal trainer and was just, like, shooting him full of, like, whatever he's shooting him full of? Like, I mean, they're the opposite. They're, like, the same person but have opposite health indexes. Like, uh, how, it's incredible. Uh, how big would Jimmy Garoppolo's jaw be at that point? That would be, oh, yeah, yeah, be very large. Yeah. All right, we got three Saturday games 
Hooray! I can't wait to watch them. Uh, they're not terrible. I mean, two of them aren't terrible. One of them's pretty terrible. But the this one I don't think is, although, again, no starting quarterbacks. It's the Vikings, the Josh Dobless uh, Vikings. They're visiting Cincinnati who don't have Joe Burrow. Um, I, I think what a huge advantage for Minnesota just not to have to have the game plan for Josh Dobbs because, man... I'm tired of watching him. You know, I got tired of watching him in Arizona, and he's he's just awful. Uh, I, the football question I wanted to ask you here is: I know you catch with the, catch up with these games eventually. You know, the Bengals like really kind of road roughshod, as they say, over the Colts. Um, it, does it? I mean, obviously, we know that that uh, Joe Burrow's a much, 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 much better quarterback than Jake Brown, Browning. But are the Bengals the kind of unit? away from the quarterback, they're so solid to you that just give me competent quarterback play and like they're a legit playoff team or has this kind of been fluky? Kind of fluky to me okay. still. Um, I still think they do have gaps. Like I still think losing just, they did lose <clears throat> over the course of last year. <clears throat> but there is, yeah. <clears throat> what is happening? I'm like, like it's, I'm like, like, you know, Sherlock Holmes is special. Like, ah! um, <laughs> I don't know what that means either. I don't know what that means. Um, Really don't know what you that got means. Got Dave to snort but though. <laughs> I will. Say, I mean, it's just like that. What? What? That makes no sense. That was like what? I feel like I'm on like sure. the Masked Singer. You no. What you were. This? You were. Uh, you were doing Dak Prescott. Here we go. Yeah, that's, that's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah, and I don't even know who that is. Um, but I will say that uh, the more that Josh Dobbs like learns about football, the worse he gets. That's what the problem is here. <laughs> they need true. to reset him. He needs to get the wand and come back and restart and be like, <laughs> "What is this?" And then he'll just start throwing touchdowns. Yeah. Um, I don't miss the feel-good stories, but I will say that the Bengals do have a sense of confidence. To go back to your actual question, they do have a sense of repeatability, and like they do find guys like this Brown guy. Like I'm not saying he's great, but like you know they have they have a couple things that are helping, and they're winning at the line of scrimmage, which is worth the way they're throwing the ball. But like it's working. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's working. I, I think I I think I'm gonna answer my own question in the negative, just like you did. I don't believe it i don't believe this is some super team that like the you know i think we think brock purdy's very good but like we don't think he's we don't actually even if he's an mvp candidate because of performance i don't think we actually think he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league not yet and yet it's just such a monster around him that it's like please just be okay and and you know like that's not where we are with cincinnati i agree with you uh and actually i Kind of like Minnesota in this game, and it's not to do with Nick Mullins. Uh, maybe it's the it's the uh, inverse Josh Dobbs thing. I, I come down to like backup quarterbacks sort of are what they are, and actually the defense that I trust here is the Vikings. And the more I watch them week by week, the more I trust them more. Like I I feel like they're playing. It's not just like we've you you've talked a lot because you, you're a great observer of all things football, but a defense especially. You've talked a lot about it. Ah, a little designery and you know a little 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 kind of you know fakey and not tough. And um, I yeah, think that's Wink Martin Daly, yeah, right. But I think it's changing. Like they're really hard to run against now, and they they still blitz a ton, but it's feels a little less like like we're trying to trick you and more like we're just going to beat the crap out of you. And I think I like Minnesota at least points wise. I think I like Minnesota here. Well, yeah, they also did. They did what the Lions like told everybody they were going to do, which is like a quick one, like short term secondary fix. Okay. Like they got they got Byron Murphy. They have this. I forget the guy's name. This rookie corner who's like holding his own, and <clears throat> that allows them. It's what the Browns are doing too. It's like good, competent corner play. Go crazy at the line. Like just it's the Jim Schwartz theory. The Eagles try to do it, but apparently, like their cornerbacks are forty five years old. But like m- what I mean is like they're they did do this effective read like. Bringing in Flores and competent corners is like a not it's a not it's it's a significant change, yeah. And it's it's kind of what the Giants did last year a little bit, which is like just throw everything at you. So yeah, yeah I agree. I'm on Minnesota too because I think okay. they're going to throw everything at you. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm on Minnesota. I'll I'll give the three. Uh, I I feel I feel pretty good about that one. All right, the middle game on Saturday. I don't want to spend too much time on Mitch Trubisky. My God, what a waste of energy that was on Thursday night a couple Thursdays ago or whenever that was the last Thursday um you know you want to say the Patriots I mean I I was on the Steelers and I'm bitter but like Mitch Trubisky my god <laughs> my god I mean, yeah not yeah. good I can only imagine the guy Drake May how often his his agent is just working on like talking points about how you're not Mitch Trubisky because <laughs> yeah, he's like the next North Carolina like top pick right. like that's a that's a scary color for a quarterback when he walks in. You're like, is that Carolina blue? <laughs> like you just like Mr. Bisky has stained the ilk. Like, so. but I'll tell you, I don't think the Colts are good, and I think 
we've already had TJ Watt. Like we could spend a second auction on this. How'd you how'd you feel about TJ Watt not having a concussion but needing a a colored shield, a tinted oh, shield? I mean, come on, come on. It's just it's really like I, you know what? Do what you're gonna do, but please don't then make me feel bad about it. Right. Please don't then you know say we got to take care of these guys. We got to you know like the most important thing in our league is our vet, our retired player. No, it's not. Stop it. Like, just stop talking now, you know, because you're, you're all frauds and it's fine. Be frauds. Everything's a fraud, right? That's fine. But don't, don't then turn around and tell me like that. N- you have to take this part really seriously. Well, you don't. So, you know, go away. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Maybe Matt. All right. I'm on the Steelers here. I, I, yeah. I think the Colts <laughs> kind of stink. And I think the only good unit on that entire te- on field will be the Steeler defense. Yeah, they're bad. They're really bad. Yeah. I don't say the Colts are bad. Like I've tried to glom onto something with the Colts, but I also realize that I say it in a way that sounds like Colts. Like, yeah, it's a Colts, you know. <laughs> you and, and it's like, what a, you and what a terrible Colt to be in. Like, you know what I mean? Just like, <laughs> what are we doing here? It's like, is that Reggie Miller? Like, what is this? Like, no. So I'm I'm, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take one and a half points. I'm gonna take them as well. Okay, we're on the same side. All right, I like the the Saturday night game, though. This is fun because the Broncos have just become this entire other thing. And the more the weeks go by and the more they get solidified that I'm not crazy and that this is actually what's going on with the Broncos, the more I respect Sean Payton. I say it every week on the show, but like... I know exactly what his plan is, and every team in the NFL knows exactly what their plan is. I know there are people in Denver who think Russell Wilson's playing great. Look at the numbers. He threw touchdowns. I know exa- everybody in, in, the football, in, in the football knows that they are, they've turned the defense around, they're playing very well on defense, and they're playing exactly as conservative as you'll allow them to play to stay in games offensively along with like four bombs and three of them were to Jerry Judy, and they all hit his hands, and he didn't catch them last week. And then one to Cortland Sutton that he catches for a touchdown. But that's that's the recipe, and it's it's a really it's smart. He's adapted his team to what they're capable of doing, something that the regime last year couldn't do. Yeah, you're right. I started watching that more, like the conservative part, and it is what's amazing the smoke and mirrors of it that it makes it look like he's doing more. Yeah. It makes it look like Wilson's being empowered, and then you realize you're like. Oh my God! This is five ten Jared Goff, like yeah, meaning, yeah. like 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 in the way that Goff, in a bad way, gained this momentum. And I guess John, you know, I don't know what Ben Johnson or whatever that I don't I don't watch enough of the Lions to know that like what scheme changes have occurred. Like it's more just that it's Goff, I guess. And the more time you have Goff, the more golfing is going to happen. That's right. But like, whereas with Wilson, it seems like there's very sincere governor on the engine. Whereas it f- feels this year with, with the Lions, it was like, let's see what this baby can do. And it was like, no. Right. You don't want to see what that baby can do. It's like, you know, like, like uh, Russell Wilson is in the arcade thinking he's, like, dominating the game. And his dad's like, I just put all the dollars in there. And he's like, yeah! <laughs> in, this, in this editorial cartoon that we're, that we're imagining, it's Sean Payton with the wallet, right? Oh, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. And he's just, he's telling him, he's like, focus, you're doing great. And he's just, he bought the game off. So, right. Yeah. So it is. It is a question here. I mean, this. Imagine if this line had been a month ago. So we're, this is uh, Lions minus four. If this had been a month ago, what's this line? Oh, like seven and a half, clear of a touchdown for sure. Yeah, I was thinking nine. Like, like people thought yeah, the Broncos yeah. were terrible. You know, like. Oh yeah, yeah. Post Miami, it was like a whole different. And that arc. was more yeah. than fair. More than a month ago, that yeah. was more like three months ago. But but still, like I think people are like, oh, it's a this is a, a fairly sober line. Um, and to be honest, I think maybe a little too sober the thing that the broncos haven't had to do in this streak is chase and part of that is just because the defense has been playing very well and if someone wanted to argue to me listen i don't i think jared goff's been bad it hasn't mattered where don't tell me it's been outside i remember the thanksgiving game that was in detroit like you know i've seen home games where goff has stunk he can stink here and he can I feel like, you know, we were we were selling the lions at the top of the market i remember when they when people were like they can go to Baltimore and they should be favored. And we were like, okay, you know, I feel like maybe yeah, this is starting. Yeah. yeah. This is going to start to maybe be the bottom of the market Four doesn't feel like enough to me. So I think I'm on the lions. I think it is enough. It just feels like a kicking game to me. Um, okay. I just, I, I just sincerely have gained more respect for what they've done with the Denver's defense. Like you're saying, they yeah. really found out that they have this plan. They're like, Hey, Sertan, is that good? Whatever happened with Sertan at the beginning of the season is over. So weird. Like, so yeah, like he's back. So they're just good. I don't know what to say. So. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, I, f- I feel like that's it's awfully close to me. I set it at five, so like the fact that it's four, I'm like, uh, I guess I'll give them. I have but... three and a half. I don't yeah. have some huge gut. I just yeah, thought it was yeah. a kicking game, and I would rather be on the side of just kicking the points when I don't know. So, so before we get to the Sunday games and the Monday game, uh, let's thank DraftKings for sponsoring. We'll take just a, a minute here of your time, and we would love it if you would check out DraftKings. If you've never downloaded the DraftKings app, um, if you sign up using the code Harris Tube, all one word, that will uh, signal to DraftKings that sponsoring this show that you like to watch every week and laugh along with Jim, uh, it, it signals that it works. And so, um, if you would do that, please, please do that. That'd be great. And then also, you make one five dollar bet, you'll get a hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets in your account instantly. We obviously use this as an opportunity to talk about how we would play these games. We don't want you to play for very much. We want you to play for like five dollars a game, ten dollars a game you know try to be under control there are fun props that you can get on DraftKings. they have great specials every every day there's football there's some crazy special that feels like it's kind of tilted in our favor as betters um because they're trying to you know lure us in and and keep us happy uh so if you would download that app and use the code harris tube if you've never done it before it really does help us out and uh DraftKings is wonderful been since i left espn DraftKings was sponsored me nine years so i i you know i owe them an awful lot and uh, appreciate them sponsoring very, very much. All right, let's get to Sunday. We've got uh, Saquon Barkley and Alvin Kamara facing off. Mm-hmm. Are there other players on those teams? Oh, that's right. It is the Giants and the Saints. Um, you know, I, I, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. Carolina was not going to beat New Orleans or be within five points of New Orleans in New Orleans. But my God, was that a terrible performance by Derek Carr. And like, okay, he's hurt. It's He shouldn't be out there. It's I grant you all of it, but my God, he shouldn't be out there. Like he's been, I was skeptical of the signing Jim and he's been far worse than I ever could have imagined. Yeah. It's, I mean, the the Saints fan site, fan site that that follows the, like the Dalton nation of him, how much above (laughs) below the Dalton line is he? And he's like immediately, like he's like, it's like this, like a win percentage added thing from last year. And he's just living, but except that like Dalton was like, I'm Dalton every week. I'm Dalton. I'm Dalton. And Carr, (laughs) Carr is just like, I'm worse than Dalton. I'm worse than Dalton. Like it's like different ways to say it. Confidence. I'm worse than Dalton. I'm worse than Dalton. It's like different accents. It gets. I mean, he's the Black Knight. D- Derek Carr is the Black Knight. He shows up. He's going to show up week in, in week eighteen just a head, just like one <laughs> like a head bouncer, and it's going to be his best. Amount. It's a Monty Python reference for everybody out there who's who's twenty seven and watching this. Go watch Monty Python and the Holy Grail. It's very funny. Uh, you know, I I would love to blame injuries, but he's also kind of a coward. He throws the ball like he he gets a lot of credit for throwing the ball away. It's great. Tony Romo will be like, "That was brilliant." It was like, <laughs> so, well, also you need to time it up. Have you ever noticed that Mike Thomas just constantly subtweets him throughout games? It'll be like, it'll be like, <laughs> but he'll it, do it in football talk as if people can't break it down. But like that wasn't the read there. It's like, well, what, you're not reading a book right now. I don't think. And like Derek Carr just completely whiffed on a wide open pass. Like he he's like it's it's active subtweeting. It's like a new record. It's like he's doing it from the sideline. So yeah. Um, we we I'll, I'll actually use this as an opportunity to promote the silliest thing video that uh, Dave does every week, and hopefully somewhere above us or below us or something, he'll put a link to this week's show because I recommended to him, and he may have seen it anyway, but it made the show. I was very pleased that Tommy Cutlet's agent, who is from the great state of Massachusetts, who's a crazy person, uh, it was in the in the stands kissing everybody when when Tommy DeVito did good things. Uh, can he go to New Orleans and keep it close? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, also, I like he's, that guy's gonna have like an iced out Parmesan pack on his like neck. You're like, I love that guy. He's so he's just so like he's so bro culture. I love him. Um, this can happen. Uh, I actually have this at six, so I don't. I just think it's like so. You get five and a half. Five and a half. Yeah. The, answer, the football question is, um, I hate to say it, like the Saints are bad, but they know how bad they are. Does that make sense? Like, like they're they're just like, yeah, we're gonna lose this game but we might win this game yeah. like whereas the giants are just throwing stuff at the wall i don't know what they're doing i can't i can't even I mean, say he, they're, they're being they're being the giants they're they're blitzing and they're 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 not falling apart on offense yeah well he's so. he's been super fun but let's be honest he was at like yeah. 67 yards passing midway through the fourth quarter you know and then yeah. and again and then the monday night game that everybody saw against the packers like you know it wound up being a respectable number because it needed to be at the end after sick one fumbled right but like I mean, it's I, if Josh, it's, it's like if Josh Dobbs was in a, was a Super Mario Brothers. Game. <laughs> <laughs> it's what it is. It's just more palatable. Hold on, I need a moment. <laughs> 
<laughs> that had like that joke had like seven levels to it. That was really great. <laughs> I, I can't wait for the TikTok version of this in which I laugh for yeah. half of it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I and yet I'm going to bet on Tommy Cutlets. I just I I don't think the Saints should be favored by five and a half against anybody right now. I, I I said it last week against Carolina. I was just wrong. But maybe the Giants are a little better than Carolina. I don't feel super confident about it. But it sounds like we're slightly on opposite yeah. sides here. Um, hey, the Bears offense. It works. It's really good. We didn't have it. We didn't see it coming necessarily. I mean, I, you know, I had them over Detroit, but I didn't necessarily see like an, an offensive explosion. Um, what the heck? Like, can Justin, yeah. all the people who decided Justin Fields can't play, can he play now? Yeah. Well, he, the thing he's doing that he didn't do before was run for his life all the time. Um, <laughs> and some of it's because he's actually being a little bit more protected, and other parts of it are just like there's more things available to him, <laughs> like competent players, and they're setting up some really nice like cross screen stuff for him or cross field stuff for him that I really like. It it looks gimmicky, but it's basically just like, hey, come here, and yeah. then they do, and he's like, yeah. no, go there. Like yeah. he's got it's like early Justin Fields, uh, early uh, uh, Hurt stuff, which is good. It like. You know, bit misdirections, but to the whole field. Like, it's like a Steph Curry kind of thing. You bring all the gravity to you, so then this guy's open. It's They're using it effectively. I, I, I haven't seen them use Fields' as gravity, to say, effectively, until now. Yeah, I'm I'm somewhat vindicated. Feel a little vindicated that that you know I've been on the pro Justin Fields. I think he's a I think he's an NFL level quarterback. I think he's good. I think he could win with the right team around him. I think DJ Moore is very clearly a good step in the right direction to having the right team around him. Um, I don't want to get into the conversation about Eberflus keeping his job because you know we don't know. But how about where I think week by week it is worth checking in because the Bears are likely to have the number one pick because they have Carolina's pick. Like week by week, how far do we get along a good stretch of play for Fields when they beating teams that we think are better than them? Where we go, you know what? They might have to keep him. They might have to trade that well, pick. Marvin Harrison. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or just trade the pick. Yeah. Or, or, or take Marvin Harrison and just be like, let's let's take the best player that we think's here. I mean, right. if, if you think the quarterback market got, or you probably do both in this weird. You yeah, know, you could trade trade with market. the Patriots, get the Patriots, the and still get your guy, still get your guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th- they have the room. We'll see what they do. There's t- a couple inter- interesting scenarios here with Arizona as well. Right. You know, like what do they do? If, what what I'm asking, yeah. I guess, is like, is there a level of impre- of impressiveness that he can give right. you to make it feel like it would be worth hitching the entire franchise wagon to him or, if he or looks it, like this, if, yeah if he looks at this consistently throughout like because there is also like a, a not not a caught you looking or not looking thing but there is a thing where he came back mid-season and so there could be a thing where he's like throwing you off of the look like it's, yeah. it's a new book now to, to prepare for again mid-season not that you were so worried about well, I, I forget the last guy's name it's like <laughs> Bajent Tyson Bajent oh, t- t- Tyson Bajent yeah he also yeah. I, I recently watched him do uh, Eminem karaoke which is just I don't know how I ended up there, but I will say, and I was like, who is this? And then I figured out, I was like, that's clearly an NFL quarterback. Um, yeah, no, there is a way it has to be repeatable. And I guess right. what I'm saying is I need to see it over like styles make fights. I need to see it against teams down the end that really want to beat him. But right. I, I have been impressed the way he played against Detroit the last two times was really impressive. Like Minnesota, he gave it to the And Minnesota. Yeah. He was freaking terrible for three quarters and then somehow pulled it, pulled a one last drive out of his butt. I think that's the point is like, let's not romanticize the Viking game before the buy. Right. That it was, right. it was terrible. So I'm, yeah. I'm sort of with you. That's sort of my answer too. like, I almost think there's nothing. I, I almost think he needs to go somewhere else. I, I'm excited to see him go somewhere else. I said it many times, go to the Patriots. I'd be so happy. You know, um, yeah. how about this game? They're going to Cleveland uh, and they're the Browns are a three point favorite. What do you think? Yeah, I'm still giving the points with the Browns, even though I've been impressed with Fields. I love what this defense is doing. Like I said it last, like they have their formula, great cover corners. Uh, Miles Garrett seems to be like a Marvel character, and they're just like hammering you. They like they have their their formula down. And Flacco isn't good, but he's fine. He's 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 basically like imagine if you didn't pay Derek Carr. That's like that's what it tastes like. That's what a, a, a little <laughs> slice of Joe Flacco tastes like. Your ex- yeah, your expectations are so much lower because he wasn't brought in to be anybody's savior, right? And to rescue any franchise. I, I'm gonna be on the Bears here, even though the Browns were my bit, best bet last week. Um, I think it for me it comes down to hon- honestly, I think the Bear defense is playing very well, and I think they're gonna yeah. have something for Flacco. So. We'll see. We're on opposite sides there. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time with you on Falcons Panthers because it's Falcons Panthers. Um, all I'll tell you is that whatever the number was going to be, 
I'm on the Falcons after last week's mayhem of deciding I wanted to be on Carolina. So it's it's three on the road. It's it's freaking what's his name? Desmond Ritter giving points on the road. Oh, I'm all about it. Sure. Why not? I mean, Arthur Smith runs like this super complicated like wedding wedding DJ company where he's just like, no, not play this. It's just like <laughs> it's terrible. And he just tell all the DJs at one time, all these weddings are just being ruined all over the metro. Like <laughs> That's what it feels like. He just is always in our way of joy. Um, <laughs> I, I'm also going to give these points. My thing, though, is I thought J.C. Horn coming back would make a difference. It kind of did. He's he's amazing, the corner for, for Carolina. He's had this kind of, you know, yeah. uh, a cursed career so far. He's on the field for less than half, half the time. But when he is, he's really good. He did make a difference. He took Olave out of the game. But he didn't broke matter. up. He broke up a beautiful yeah. bomb that was like one of Derek Carr's only good throws of the game. Right. It was open and he like made up and the last two steps he made it up and knocked it away. It was a brilliant play. It really was. And, and it's the revenge of Joe Horn, you know. Um it's <laughs> it's 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 his dad. So so it it's really um it comes but that doesn't matter, I guess. I watched the rest of the game and I was like it didn't matter. They're the that offense, bad. So the I, offense I, is so yeah. bad. The defense is Carolina defense isn't isn't the worst defense right. in the league. It's not excruciating. It's the offense. It's Bryce Young. He's awful. Uh, well, yeah. He's yeah, awful. Player, he's just like, Adam Thielen was open. He was just like clapping. And he was like, here. And he's not that fast anymore. And he was like, throw it there. I'll be, meet you. And like Bryce Young was like, there? It, just, it was like a <laughs> – it was so bad. All right. Tampa Bay visits Green Bay. And if we could pretend that Monday night never happened, I think we would feel pretty strongly that Green Bay is just a better team than the right down the middle, exactly the – arithmetic mean of all NFL team Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Not terrible, not great. Baker Mayfield's going to make some mistakes. He's going to make some good plays. He was ahead that entire game in Atlanta last week and then decided ah, too, that's too, exo- too spicy, too exotic. But, you know, they're fine. They're, ju- they're just fine. And for a minute there, just one minute, Jim, we thought Green Bay was good. Did we change our minds after that jo- Jordan Love performance against the Giants? Oof, that was bad. He went right back. <laughs> right back. I mean, Whatever he was that. very good in the fourth quarter when he needed to be. He led what should have been yeah. the winning drive, but right. the rest of it was so bad. Yeah. It was. It was. Um, I can't even explain it because I I was buying. I really was a buyer. Me too. Like, going in. And I'd been on this team, so it was like I was rebuying and it was like a different price. And I had like multiple, you know, I don't even know if that's, that's not even called shorting. It's just called having too many shares. Um, or, or a pyramid scheme. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 It's like I'm that rare snowbird that goes from Green Bay to Tampa Bay. That's like how I <laughs> play here. You know, I summer in Green Bay. And um, I just think, I think that that's who they are, though, is what I'm trying to realize. Like they're just, they're the we don't know, we don't know how to show up team. And so th- those teams are difficult for me. That's why I'm going to take the points only because I know you're going to ask me. It's only because of the volatility of that team. If you told me that I could have a little bit of process where I could say, all right, 70% of the time we'll get these Packers, then I would go with the Packers because I do think they have just a more competent setup the whole way around. But I can't tell you that. That that, that was an identity game. Oh, okay. No, this is who we are. This is is what we do. And again, the Giants to do that. Yeah. Right. That that was that's such a good way to say it. That's such a good way to say it. That was an identity game. That was absolutely not about the Giants. The Giants are a below average team and they played below average in that game. The quarterback wasn't asked to do anything. He scrambled. That was lovely. But that was about you, man. You're a good team. You go win that game. Yeah. And they did not do that. Yeah. And and you saw you saw uh I mean Buck and Aikman made a big deal about um the coaching staff like every time Jordan Love would throw another pass over somebody's head, they were just going <laughs> they kept, yeah, yeah, they kept yeah. going. Oh, oh no! Oh, I mean, they felt. There's too, there's too yeah. There's, yeah, there's too many distinct haircuts in that coaching staff. So you'd be like, oh, the guy with that. Like, there's all these. <laughs> they should have. They should have just one cut. Right, Matt Lef- Like all, just look like Matt Lafleur. All of you, just look like exactly. That yeah, feels like the high fade. So yeah. you're on Tampa. You're gonna take three and a half. I'm gonna give them, but I feel stupid about it. Uh, I'm doing a McCormick here. I'm gonna talk bad about a team and then lay points. Look, well, yeah. Uh, I, I set it at five and. I guess I'm. It makes sense. Uh, three and a half. All right. So uh, the Jets are visiting the Dolphins. We're back to Zach Wilson. And uh, on the Friday after Thanksgiving, you and I uh, were like, uh, not so fast. The Dolphins haven't played a lot of good defenses. The Jets are going to be able to keep this close. Smash cut. It's a thousand to nothing. And you and I have turkey legs sticking out of our eye, eye sockets or something. Um, so, so, so surely if it's eight and a half points, you're totally, absolutely willing to lay them and, uh, and take the dolphins here. Yeah. Yes. 
Are you? <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, it's just again the volatility thing. Like, like uh, it's not at all like they were building the identity that the Packers were. But like the whole sell on this Jets team was like just this much quarterback play, and they got that. They got that last week, and then like, right? I like. I don't know what portion of my timeline is insane, but the portion that kept saying like, "Oh, Zach Wilson looks okay," it was like, "Stop it! Stop doing this to yourself!" Like. I know. No, no. And I do it sometimes too, but it's just like, no, like, this is a Hallmark movie. Don't do this. Don't. (laughs) I mean, do you think this line, so this line's Miami minus eight and a half, which is a lot in an an, an NFL game, in a division rivalry, in a, you know, the, the, the favorite has already blown out the underdog. That often doesn't work out. What's the Tyreek Hill factor here? I mean, is, is just this, this is baked in that Hill is playing because he was able to run around some. And therefore, you right. know, if it was really a serious injury, he wouldn't have been able to come back in the game at all. Yeah, it's more like a my fantasy team kind of thing where, like, he's clearly going to have three touchdowns next week because he got hurt this week. <laughs> um, no, but he is a recuperative. Just he's one of these guys who just is, is a freak like that. I don't know. To speak like he's he's got a baseball player type thing to him where he's just like, ah, just or or a football player thing. <laughs> if you want to just, keep simple. <laughs> you know. Uh, if you want to keep it more he's simple. super tough. If uh, I could, if I could use a sports analogy here, he's like he's like super tough. He goes beyond the NFL. Thinking, he's like a football I was, player. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about Ricky Henderson, like 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 taking some new drug, um, but like it's just I'll just take the old drugs. It's cool. Um, yeah, this game this game is a little confusing for me because um, I still have this thing with me that's like the Jets styles make fights. The Jets can get you into their corner and muck it up. But I don't think Wilson – I don't know who it is. It's definitely not Wilson. It's Joe Flacco who, like, just, I guess, didn't pick up calls from New York this year because yeah. – or never got a call because it's just not going to happen. I'm not going to buy two weeks in a row. Like, recency bias is the most dangerous drug in the world when it comes to the Jets. Like, whether they've looked hard, awful or looked good, don't believe it. They're the Jets. They're still going to just be – they're going to score seven points here. Clip it. And it Dave, clip and it. Make a note. Good. That was a great – that was great. The recency bias is, is a bad drug when it comes to the Jets. It's so true. Yeah. 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 It's it's very very true, and I'm I'm gonna just stick. I'm gonna I'm gonna follow your lead. I I, I set the line at not at Miami minus nine. So by the letter law, yeah. I'd be on your side anyway. But I didn't feel good about it. Um, but you just made me feel good about it. So Dolphins, I'm with you. Uh, all right, stupid Patriots being stupid. Um, they are going. Uh, they're another home. But uh, as I as I said on Thursday's podcast in the segment with Jake Turbridge, only the Patriots could make a national television network. Uh, decide that they did not want to have Patrick Mahomes and Taylor Swift on their air. But that's what the Patriots did, having their game against the Chiefs flexed out into a rum, rum-dum uh, early game on Sunday. Uh, again, another game that is absolutely not about the Patriots, right? The Patriots are probably Giants-level terrible. They're a bottom-five team in the league. We all know it. This is about can the Chiefs just finally take care of business. So I ask you a question. Can the Chiefs finally take care of business? Phew. I don't know, man. They have this weird early early Andy Reid thing where he's like, let's see if we can do it without receivers. You know, like it's like this <laughs> yeah. like magic trick, which is what the early Eagles experience was like. But I don't think so. I still trust this defense enough. This Kansas City defense is real. Um, they have had some tough games here, and like the offense is weird. It's weird. It's weird. It's, okay, but like yeah. Rachie Rice is there, and I think having Pacheco back will have some identity. They really couldn't find themselves without a running game. This idea that Cajun Lawyer was going to do anything other than just like litigate was crazy. Like <laughs> uh, you know, like he, he like four four billable hours. He was like, all right, four, four. I said, and like so, yeah. No, there's a real problem here with regards to viewability. I think that's a, I understand the flexing of it because this game, the the the, the, the Chiefs are going to take care of business. So the answer is yes, but it's going to be in the way they do it now, which is like twenty four to seven. Yeah, like it's, I agree, like, and that's a, it's not this thing. Right. The juggernaut's gone in the way that we thought. Like so, yeah, I agree. Like, what's the what's the path to the Chiefs scoring thirty points? There is none. I don't care who they're playing. There's it, no path anymore. It would the be, path is like yeah, like a pick six defensive yeah, touchdown. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. Yeah, I, it's it's not a good offense. It's just it's not a terrible offense, but it's not a good offense. But I'm not going to bet on the Patriots now. I don't believe it at all. I'm not feeling I'm not feeling Bailey Zappi like as some superhero. That touchdown that he threw, great catch by Hunter Henry, the second one. But that should not have been thrown, buddy. The safety's right there. It's a great throw. Terrible decision. It feels like that is the Bailey Zappi story. All over the Chiefs, minus seven and a half. Uh, I'm not going to spend a terrible amount of time on Texans-Titans, mostly because I think 
our perception of this cha- the game will change so much depending on whether C.J. Stroud can play. He was concussed very late in garbage time against the Jets. So, like, a Stroudless Texans team, I, I wouldn't want to back that team. Like, I just, I don't know. It's like Davis Mills or something terrible. Like, yeah, it's, it, it wouldn't be pretty. Um, the only cool part about this game is that the Titans are going to wear the Oilers uniforms which is really dirty <laughs> like that's really dirty it would be like they're not that they would care but it'd be like the utah jazz wearing like 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 pete maravich jerseys it would just be strange <laughs> you know like like not, that's not even a good joke it this is grosser than that um it's just bad um yeah i can't read this tennessee team i've had a trouble with them all year uh the week that i say that they're gonna be this they're that like you said it best they have no pass defense, and they can do, especially when Simmons is in. When, when Jeffrey Simmons was out last week, but when yeah. he's in, they're a great, great, great rush defense. And it's also like kind of true on offense. So like, yeah, we know how to run. When we pass, it's more like a punt. That's kind of a pass, <laughs> and it's just like so. They're just crazy. They're spazzes. It's like and Tannehill, he's not like Levis. Like I don't like Levis is a spaz. Like Tannehill <laughs> is a spaz, but like kind of honed in his spazness in Tennessee. This is like early t- Tannehill, isn't it? I I mean. Except for Levis played very, very well. We needed to against the Dolphins, you he know. Did. He it, did. Like, that was awesome. Two really good drives. Um, here's what I'll say, and I, I said it on the podcast too. Like, like, I would love to see Will Levis with a different offensive system. It, they're trying to make a Tannehill out of him, and I just don't think he'll ever be one. You know, he's he needs to be. I, I think there's some overlap between Justin Herbert. How do you think? How crazy do you think that sounds? It's not crazy. Big rangy weirdos who like, who like just should be for, set free, you know, but are yeah. in these offenses that are in these offenses that are like drop 7 and play action only. <laughs> like, ah! well, I mean the Chargers want to go crazy, they just don't have any healthy uh, options, you know, like yeah. and now Herbert himself is I, like I would love to see Levis with Kellen Moore as his offensive coordinator. I mean, it wouldn't win games cuz it's Kellen Moore, but they would probably be fun. Um, right. Anyway, I'm staying away. I got to push here. I'm not I if I said earlier that I only had one, I lied. I have two. This this I am not on this game. I'm going to take the points just with the Stroudness mystery. Uh, and, like, I do think they have a, a plan, like Houston. Like, I, I trust that about them, even when they're volatile with regards to, like, obviously not having your quarterback is inherently bad. <laughs> yeah. But, like, yeah. but like I'm saying, uh, even when they fall apart on defense, I can explain it. Like, it's like they fell apart because they got exposed at safety or whatever, wherever they're bad. They don't fall apart the way, say, that the Eagles do or some of these other teams might, where they're just like no-shows, you know, like yep. the Packers last week. So I kind of trust them a little bit more to be in a All grind. Right. You're on Houston. You're going to take those points. All right. Uh, I only have about 49ers Cardinals. I got one question for you, which is that does any sane current power ranking of NFL teams have to have San Francisco number one right now? Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah, yes. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's yeah. even a long conversation. I mean, it doesn't mean they win uh, because the Super Bowl isn't contested in mid-December, but like, if you're going mean, to be the, honest about the body of work, you know. The, they, the, they, they're the t- fantasy team that everybody hates. They're like, last year, like, oh, we're going to go get McCaffrey. And then this year, they <laughs> went and got Chase Young, and no one talked about it, but football-wise, that's bigger than getting a running back. They just got, like, Chase Young had this career where he disappeared, but like, he coming out, Chase Young was like, it was like Miles yeah. Garrett kind of kind yeah. of prospect where you know yeah. you look like you literally look past the quarterbacks and it's acceptable on a value scale, and they just got him and it's just it's just uh, they've been amazing since then by the way they're they're, they're a seventy sack team since they've gotten him so yes that's the answer. But I'll say the Seattle game last week was close for a long time. Like Drew Lock played was, really well and like San Francisco was struggling to put them away, but in the end that's good what good teams do is that when they're struggling to put you away, they eventually then put you away and oh by the way cover, right? You know, so like Yeah, it was yeah. a chunk play game. It never felt though like I watched that game, it never felt that risky though for them. It it was almost yeah. just like they knew what the spread was. They were like, "Yeah, <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, we'll get there at some <laughs> point." All right, so it's so it's in Arizona. It's twelve and a half. Are you get Are you giving them? I am only because I think this defense is this. It's the defense for me that they can finish the game out in a way that if you just get ahead, it's going to happen because like which they will. So all these like I know this sounds terrible because it's a huge line, but it just feels inevitable. They feel inevitable is the way to say it. Yeah. They really do kind of feel inevitable. It's true. All right. So here in Los Angeles, the Washington Commanders are coming off a bye week, rested, ready, and I don't know, maybe trying to win. But they're visiting the Rams and uh, and the the. Fantasy people in in the back of our heads, like this is an NFL show, but of course we are we are also fantasy commentators, and we we do 
care about matchups for the purpose of individual. And the and the thing that everybody it's screaming at everybody is like the commanders are so bad against the pass. The those corners like keep getting benched every game. A, a different one is benched. Emmanuel Forbes has probably been benched more than he's actually played this year. How does this Rams passing game not go crazy? I mean, they just went crazy kind of against Baltimore. They just took the Ravens to overtime. And um, that's that's definitely there as like the main thread in this game. Is there any way that thread doesn't come true? I don't know. McVay's been weird this year, but that's hard. That's like especially strange if you don't recognize that these guys just don't have it. Like, yeah. and they've been yeah. outscored. What is it like seven million to twelve the last three games? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like they're on the they're yeah. on the everybody's fired ship. Like, it's everyone in the building can feel it. It's all there. It's a ghost town yeah. feel. I think. I think nobody's even uncapping their whiteboard markers anymore. Or they're just like, nah, this guy, he's fine. Just leave it. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> just leave just it. Like... It's fine. I mean, Biennemi not might not be fired because Biennemi well, might no, stick right. around as the head coach, but everybody else, right. yeah. Jack Del Rio is is tearing open beer bottles without ripping them. He's just breaking the beer bottle and drinking the beer, you know? Yeah. <laughs> See, uh, so I, I'm going to be willing to, I, I'm sort of with you that, yeah, coming out of the bye, I'm sure they really figured it out. I, I don't believe it. I'm, I'm going to give these points. Rams minus six and a half. I set this one at like eight, so. I feel good. I had a seven, but it felt better than this 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 margin. It just felt like, yeah, they're just better. And they, they, the Puka thing is real. Like that, that stuff's real. They, they can pick on them where they're bad. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So I, want, I do want to spend a little time on this next game because uh, the Bills. You know they they. You can argue that they shouldn't have. You can argue that the. And you know, I didn't ask you about Chiefs whining earlier, and I feel like let's. We'll stay away from it. Enough enough people have weighed in on uh, on the whining. But, I mean, it's fair to say that Buffalo maybe, you know, is a, is a lucky break away from losing that game and essentially being completely out of the playoff picture. And instead, they win in Kansas City. Uh, I think they deserve it, though. Josh Allen is playing the part of Cam Newton in the story of Cam Newton 2015, whatever that was, Carolina Panthers. He is doing everything. And he has to do it again because they have another very hard matchup. They are home against the Cowboys. Uh do you, when you think about, I know you hate the Cowboys very much personally, but if you think about them as a football analyst, there's been much said about Dallas that eh, it's been bad competition and it's been home games. So, okay, here's some pretty good competition and it's a road game. Does the fact that it's better competition and a road game change the way you think about them? It, it, it doesn't. I think that's a lot of crutchy stuff. Um, okay. They've played their schedule and they've beaten those people up, those teams up, that they... They're just really good. I hate to say it. They're foundationally good. Uh, they're, and their philosophy, like you said it best earlier, like that, like the the premonition or whatever you want to say, like the expectation for McCarthy being this like this old school one two punch, one two punch guy. It's just not hasn't been the case. They've been a completely normal, if actually like modernized team in the sense of how they're using the field and passing play over expectation and like letting their best things live and being like, Hey, we do have CD lamb. Wow. Weird. Like, like the Tony Pollard thing, it didn't happen this year. Like whether it was the leg or whatever, the degradation of the offensive line, whatever happened, or just the fact they realized we're better passing than we are doing that. It, it didn't become a thing. They kept trying to make fetch happen. They were just like, Nope. You know, I do. Yeah. I mean, and Pollard's been fine lately. Like he's been scoring right. touchdowns and been fine, but he's not the focal point of the offense, the way folks automatically assumed because it's a Mike McCarthy team. And I think McCarthy probably assumed it this summer. But right. What he's learned about his team is that Dak Prescott's deck. See Prescott's playing really well, but I do still feel like he's got, he's got something yeah. waiting for us, right? He's got, oh, it's a coming. yeah, it's coming. No, this you know, coming. I mean, it's coming. 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 He's going to do his, he's here Romo. We go. He's Romo. Like he, he, he's he, Romo with a half. Bo- it's like Romo. If Romo could take a half body tattoo session. Yeah. And didn't like have <laughs> slide in. Like slide in sketchers, you know that. that what Tony what would be on Tony Romo's half body tattoo? What would it be mostly well, of? Uh, it would be like par threes, sketchers, uh, <laughs> Arnold Palmer's non alcoholic, and just a big Arnold Palmer, and um, <laughs> probably like again a, a, a thing of the of the uh, Dallas skyline, but then like with some self with some hubris, it would be like uh, 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 Emmett or like Troy's better in the air, just to remind him. <laughs> Like a, like, you know, like, I, like, a I like the idea that it's literally just across his shoulder blades, an actual portrait of the golfer, golfer Arnold Palmer. That's what I, I, yeah. I like to imagine. It's yeah. 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 His- and, and then and with a star neck tattoo, like, <laughs> make it all weird. right. So, uh, you know, I'm, I think I'm, I'm willing to give these points. I kind of do think, 
you know, the Cowboys, I, I, I hate the letdown argument. Maybe it's just the kind of a- accumulation of, of hard games, you know, of, I mean, they had, they had to really work against Seattle and, you know, they worked against Philly. They also worked Philly, but you know, it was a hard, it was a hard game. And maybe I just go, yeah, I think I trust Buffalo a little bit more. I'm going to go Buffalo minus two by golly. I'm going to take the points. I hate to do it, but, uh, you're I Dallas. Just think they're, I yeah, think they're, ju- I think they're just as good as this team. And, I don't know how scary it is when people jump on tables. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to factor in the, the Buffalo <laughs> thing. So, you know. All right, we're on Sunday night. The uh, Ravens got away with one against the Rams. Lamar Jackson played really, really well in that game, and the defense did not show up. They're going to Jacksonville, um, and they're going to wind up being road favorites. And I want to ask you about the Baltimore defense because you don't like Patrick Queen. There are parts of that very, very acclaimed defense that you don't love. It was last week... Uh, we've seen we've seen the version of last week too many times this season uh, to think that the Colts that the Ravens don't have that in them that defensively they just have big miss laps type games where they get shoved around. Uh, I think I'm saying I'm saying a statement that I think you agree with. I think you agree about that. You have this Achilles heel or. Or like, like that, that the defense basically isn't as good as people say. It's not. No, yeah, it's it's a well reputations work that way with like especially defense. It's like this thing. It's like a, it's a conglomerate or like offensive line. Yeah. It's like well, there's things that change that don't make it as 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 singular as that. But yeah, the thing is philosophically they're not the same. They don't have the blitz rate since Wink left. They don't. They win differently. They're basically trusting Roquan Smith to be like their Levante David, like their like defensive god, which is great. Uh, except that Patrick Queen is crazy. I don't know if anyone saw like two weeks ago. Patrick Queen had a clean shot at the quarterback, and then he chased the blocker because clearly his job was to make sure the blocker was out. But it was like, guys, he doesn't matter. The quarterback's there. It was like Patrick Queen was following the instruction to a like to a detriment. You know what I mean? It was like get the dog. It was like yeah, but the horses are right here. And it's just like so. Um, Patrick Queen is funny, but yeah, th- their corners are bad, and they're like chippy. They're a chippy team. They're going to get themselves in trouble. They were late hitting in the secondary over and over. So like they think yeah. they're Baltimore, they have the Baltimore anger, but not the backup of it. So they can get into to, to up and down games. So the, the is that so can Lamar, right? I think Lamar is prepared for that type of game, meaning these days like yeah, to get up yeah. and down. They're yeah, not, yeah, they're, no, they're not yeah. the old team that has to sit on you, but um, the, the, he's close to my MVP Lamar. I mean, yeah. he's, he's been that good. Yeah. Um, the, the thing I'll say is like, it's fine to say that it's all reputation, except for there have been five or six games this year where they've just Dominated. absolutely throttled oh, yes. offenses, yeah. that defense. And like, it's weird because, you know, you typically think a defense that's cruising on reputation, they don't have those in their bag. They just have been wildly inconsistent and not always just against, you know, whoever the PJ Walker or whatever, you right. know, some, some backup Browns quarterback. So it's, it's, it's strange. Um, and, and in this game, the Jags also very strange. Like I just felt I felt like Cleveland was going to win that game last week. And when Lawrence, you know, the line jumped when Lawrence uh, wound up being in there. And I just didn't, I don't feel that team. I don't know what it is. Maybe right. Doug Peterson. Um, so in my, in my w- weird roundabout way, what I'm trying to say is these are very similar teams. And I just, maybe Baltimore is a better version of that team. But like in any given week, I kind of don't know what I'm going to get. I think I think your point is very well taken. I know what I'm gonna get out of the Ravens offense because Lamar's really good. But the defense can suddenly get them in some weird 33-30 shootout where you thought that wasn't possible. With like a strange with a strange opponent too, and that doesn't necessarily have to be the yeah. caliber, right? Yeah, they play yeah. to their opponent, but then they also like you said, they destroyed Seattle, they destroyed Detroit. Like they've done some some real whoopings. Yeah. Um, that said, I yeah. just trust them more. I trust them to show up each week. I don't have Me a too. I don't have a Doug. I, Doug Peterson is more non Super Bowl Doug lately, like like where he's just like ah like there's there's the game plan I forgot it whatever we'll do it in the car ride okay we'll strategize like <laughs> we'll do it live yeah, exactly yeah. yeah Philly Philly sure <laughs> yeah. it's like guys you know how bad that league, that could have backfired we threw it to Nick Foles like so like <laughs> I'm also on Baltimore I'm yeah. on Baltimore. Uh, minus three. All right, Monday night. We waited for the best for last because I'm sure you have bad things about the Eagles. The Eagles are going to Seattle. It's it got flexed in. The the people, good people of Seattle, get a Monday night game instead of seeing it on whatever it was Sunday afternoon. Uh, are you mad? Are you mad? Are you mad? Hmm. A little bit. Yeah. I I went through that whole terrible emotional. It's like every team goes through this. It's like normal. They weren't going to win them all. Like you have to say these sentences to yourself over and over, and then you're just like. They just have to get some things together. And then you realize they have to get everything together. And it's like, 
It's like, oh, I'm just like packing for a weekend. It's like, no, you're going to Brussels for three months. Like, you have to, you have to get your chip <laughs> like, get your stuff together, buddy. Like, you've got a chest. And um, I don't have anything packed. I don't have anything packed to explain this one. I don't have a toothbrush. Um, I just have some spray paint. Um, and I'm not going to huff it. You know? If you, ha- if you had to pick one thing that's most strong, either side of the ball, What's the biggest problem with the Eagles right now? They're still a good team, obviously. The, the pass defense. Like, any competent quarterback with any amount of time. Like, from mm, – it has to be above Carr. Like, in the Cousins range and up. Cousins and up. Even, like, Wilson. Even Russell Wilson might have a day. Like, if, if he's told what to do. If, if, if the pictures – if the laser pointers are there for him. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 It's fair. Fair point. So we we actually don't know, as of our recording this, whether Geno Smith returns. Drew Locke played a pretty good game until the end against San Francisco. He had them within a score with the ball, and then uh, San Francisco scored again, and then down two touchdowns, he freaked out and threw a terrible deep ball, and it was picked, and it was over. Uh, so So this line is Eagles minus four at Seattle. It feels to me like that's a non-Geno line, but maybe not. Yeah, it's a hedge line, I think. It's ready to go to six, and it's ready to go back to three and a half or three or whatever the Geno influence is. I agree. It's a little bit of a hedge line. Um, He seemed close enough. I don't know, like, how much missed. I don't know how how to put stock in that. Um, Yeah. But I'm going to play it as if he's out, basically, you know. Um, And again, like, the test, the the story this week is can Drew Locke throw against a video game defense? And we'll find out, you know. And uh, I did pick the Eagles. I, I gave the four. How about you? Yeah, I'm giving the four as well. I think like Locke is a problem. I think Smith would be a problem too. I think, I think like I said, the quarterback they play to their competition, but their competition is not that great in this one. Like so. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now we have to do that part in the show where we pick our favorite wager of the week. Do you have one in mind? I do. Uh, it's basically just more about the opponent, but I'm going to go with the Falcons who know who they are. They're just going to okay. run, run, run. I just, it's not, it's not enough points. Like I would need to, like, I would, I would feel scared if it was more than a kick, but it's not. So young Hoku, let's do it. <laughs> Desmond Ritter on the road. Best mm-hmm. bet favored by three. Jim yeah. McCormick, gutsy as a burglar. Uh, I'm going to go on a game where you were opposite. I'm on, I, where are we? Did you have the Vikings the or the Bengals? Oh, I had the Vikings. I have the Vikings, yeah. Oh, yeah, so I'm sorry. We're on the same side. I, I, like, yeah. the, I like the Vikings. That's the one I feel the best about. Uh, I'll, I'll take the three points and assume that it's a close game. And once again, I, don't, I, don't, I feel like, you know, the market, like, gets flustered about, um, well, it's not Josh Dobbs anymore. Who's this other guy? It's Nick Mullins. That could be bad, you know. And in the end, it's all kind of just backup quarterback theater. And what I care about is the... Uh, is the Viking defense here. So let's see on Saturday if that winds up being right. We want to know what you think, who have uh, made it to the end here. Uh, give us a comment down in the... Uh, uh, just like list the funniest thing that Jim said in this video. There were like 10 that were very good. So just t- tell us down in the comment what you thought was funniest. Uh, I- I'll do that too because I-, I laughed quite hard during this show. Also tell us your-, your favorite best bet. We love getting comments. Dave reads them all. I try to read them all. Um, and we really appreciate you leaving them and liking the video and all that stuff. Subscribing and all that stuff. Uh, we've made it through. We want to thank DraftKings so much for sponsoring. Uh, you can use that code HarrisTube, and uh, it does help us perpetuate this show into the future. I want to thank Dave Piper and all the miscellaneous Pipers. I want to thank Jim McCormick. Jim, well done. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. And, uh, and for me, I'm Chris. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for watching. Please, please, please smash that like button. Write a comment, tell us who else you'd like to see us review film on, and of course, best of all, please subscribe to our channel and then click that little bell above the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever we post a new video.